To give a more a dynamic look to the 3D objects, we can use something called ambient occlusion. So you can see that I have two objects right here, but they're not casting any shadows uh, in each other. So we can either turn on the shadows or we can go for a simpler option that is ambient occlusion. So I'm gonna go into render settings right here and I'm going to go into ambient occlusion. So if I were to enable this out, you can see that there's two mode that you can choose from as well, ray traced and uh, there's SAAO, which has just two different render settings. So you can choose either one. So you can see that now, once I actually turn this on, you see shadows on the edges. So once I click this on, you can see that the uh, shadows actually appear over here. So I can actually move this out and the shadows actually reduce a bit. If I bring it closer, shadows increases, as you can see right here, just like that. So now what I can do is I can go into group one. Let me just see this. So I'm going to go over here, fit this up into 100% and let us just resize this out. So if I were to increase this in size, you can see that the shadow uh, actually gets affected. That's the ambient occlusion. So what ambient occlusion does is that the parts which are together is actually darker. It makes the things darker just like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and you can see that there's quality preset like fast, there's medium and so forth it says ultra and so forth. So ultra is like a very high quality setting right there. You can also choose the ambient occlusion color. Let's say, for example, if you want a bluish tint to the shadows, you can select that as well, just like this. So now there's the intensity as well. If I were to decrease the intensity, the occlusion is not seen much, but if I were to increase it, you can see that the occlusion can be very high. So I'm going to choose somewhere around 18. All right. So there's some bit of an occlusion over there. There's also radius, so you can increase or decrease the radius of the occlusion as you can see. If you were to decrease it out, you can see that the occlusion actually changes out just like that. You can change with the gamma, that's the brightness of the occlusion just like that. And that's the contrast, decrease and increase the contrast just like this. So you can see that you can also increase the blur level for this and you can also increase out the blend blur and so forth. So you can see that this is the option just like that. So you can also have a bit of a light influence just like that so that at the edges you can see that there's the light. And you can also have matte intensity right here. So you can see that this is the occlusion option. So if I were to rotate the objects around, you can see that the occlusions actually react. So this just like uh, works like a shadow. So I'm going to go into particle look right here and then I'm going to rotate this out and you can see that the shadow actually changes just like that. If I were to bring it forward, you can see that it actually now works like a shadow and the objects seem more dynamic and more realistic. So that is how you can work with ambient occlusion inside of Element 3D. Hope you guys learned something as always and as always, please like, comment, share and subscribe.